It has not been a fun first two week, first three weeks, first than the last two weeks to be a Cowboys fan, but we are not going anywhere. We will be here all season and off season long, even when the Cowboys are losing, even when they're not doing anything, we will still have coverage for you. So hit that sub button right now, youtube.com slash at Cowboys TV. Let's talk some of the noteworthy comments from four different players coming out of the immediate aftermath of the week three loss against the Ravens. Cowboys are now one and two. The vibes are not good, and the call-outs or implications of call-outs of unnamed players are now underway. Here's what Demarcus Lawrence said. We've got the guys to do it, so that ain't the problem. It's just all about effing doing it. We'll get it done. Once we get out of playing Little League football and get back to playing pro football, we'll be all right. Play pro football. Do what your coaches teach you. Play your gaps. Play your blocks. Stay in your gap, and I am included in this. Just the small things that we got to get back to, and we'll do it this week. Now, Tank had said that the Cowboys are playing too much hero ball. I think that was absolutely there. Uh, I I think Tank did it on one play. He crashed into a gap he probably shouldn't have. I think the Cowboys are trying to do scrape exchanges against the the zone reads, which is where Micah actually takes the the running back, and one of your linebackers are safe. He's supposed to take the quarterback, and that didn't necessarily happen. And I I do very much quant question if, if your safeties did their jobs in terms of their run fits. Uh, Donovan Wilson, I kind of think that's who, they're, that's who they're talking about. I might be wrong on that, but there are too many reps of like, what are you doing out there? That's, that's not where you're supposed to be. Micah had this to say. Same thing as last week. Right now, we just got people trying to be Superman. People just got to own their jobs. We don't need any Supermans. We need 11 guys playing together. Theme going on here. There is. And the theme is we're not doing our jobs. Now, there are schematic issues, too. We'll talk about those this week. But it's the players are not always where they're supposed to be. And that very much shows up. Jordan Lewis had this to say, too. At the end of the day, this shit's about stopping people. We got to be credible and effing accountable every single play. That's 60 minutes of football. Doesn't matter who we play, we got to go out there and be detailed in the plays. No matter who we play in this NFL, if we're not doing that, anyone can beat us. This is not the first time we've heard this, this type of conversation around this team after a bad loss. There were several versions, outright statements of bad week of practice. And let me tell you, I am sick and tired of hearing, ah, oh, we had a bad week of practice. Don't do that. Like, that's the solution. I, I think that is a coaching indictment too. Like, you, you can't get your guys to have a good, a good week of practice? Violate the rules. Keep them longer. I, I don't care. Like, you, you should not be having a bad week of practice in the third game when you just got your butts kicked last week. That is unacceptable. And if that is the case, players have to be benched. That's the only way to get through to them at that point. So what is your panic level over the Cowboys? Scale it for me from 1 to 10. 1 on the low end, 10 on the high end. That is the pinned comment on today's video. The ad comes on YouTube. Take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. Look, we're not done with the call-outs yet or some semblance of accountability uh, in the way that maybe the people who weren't talking to the media didn't take. Dak Prescott on the week three loss. We've got to help our defense. I know what their standard is. They don't want to allow 28 points. With 28 points against an MVP player, an offense like that, that's a game we have to score 30 in. We know it. We didn't do it. Us as players, we've got to be more professional, understand our jobs, understand where we're supposed to be and do that time and time again and keep our focus. We've got to be cleaner and locked in. Take accountability. That is, frankly, for for a quarterback that very much always gets up there and defends his guys and says my fault unless when he is frustrated, that's that's about as far as I've seen that go, really. Where it's like, us as players, we weren't very accountable. We were not professional. That's that's bad, guys. And look, the way I read that from four different players, some calling out is needed. No names were specifically mentioned. But if that is is the case, got to start benching people. Hey, you you didn't do your job this week. We're putting somebody else in there. You have to do it. (laughs) You can't play hero ball on defense. Can't be apparently unprofessional on both sides of the ball and not be locked in. I don't know how we're in week three and this team needs a wake-up call in in, in an all-or-nothing season. Like That is so frustrating to me. I think that's partially on the coaches, by the way, to be clear. But 
look, you got to start making some changes because if you just go, ah, it's all fine, like the players say, hey, we're, we're not locked in, we're, we're, we're not being professional, but the coaches don't do anything about it, well, there's a, that's, that's not going to change. You do need a little bit of discipline sometimes. Now, today's show was made possible by Z-Biotics. That is the maker of the first uh, genetically engineered probiotic. Pre-alcohol is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Pre-alcohol produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. Remember to drink this probiotic before drinking alcohol, drink responsibly, and get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. It very much helps after a uh, long super chat day with, with lots of uh, activities that are involved in it during a watch party. Trust me on that. With this technology, they're going to release products that have nothing to do with alcohol as well. So stay in the loop and go to zbiotics.com slash chat sports. You can also scan the, the QR code on the screen to get 15% off your first order when you use code chat sports at checkout. Also sign up for a subscription using that code so you can always stay prepared. Zbiotics, back with a 100%, 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. That's zbiotics.com slash chat sports and use code chat sports at checkout for 15% off. A big thank you to Zbiotics for sponsoring today's show and our good times. Let's talk ownership. And literally, the ownership and the ownership of the blame as well. I can't fire the owner as much as I might like to. I also can't force him to give up uh, the GM duties that he assigns to himself. But that does not mean we can't blame them and call them out when things are bad. The most accurate thing Jalen Smith ever said, if the owner ain't, ain't tripping, we are good. The owner should be tripping, and I don't think that they are. Let's see about what has gone wrong for this Dallas Cowboys team. You had, a, you had a shaky run defense last year. It is now worse. It is the worst start to a run defense in Cowboys history since 1963. Jesus. You lost four to five rotation players up front. Now, Sam Williams is one of those guys. That was an injury. You, you know, it happens there. You added one dude in April and everyone else in August or September in the case of Carlos Watkins. So yeah, the run game got worse against the uh, on the defensive side and the offensive side. You lost Tony Pollard. You had Zeke Elliott who played 15 snaps for you last week. We'll talk about him later on this week. You got Royce Freeman who's on the Browns practice squad. Your rookie offensive lineman, look, they're playing like first year guys. They haven't been as bad as maybe Terrence Steele has been at times, but they have, they have not been instant massive upgrades. The coaching scheme especially on offense, hasn't changed because you just kept the same coaches again. And ownership chose to do all of that. You know, I'm, not, I'm not even that mad about the whole, like, ah, oh, you didn't sign Derrick Henry. I don't think with the way the offensive line and the scheme is, it, wouldn't have been, it would have been nearly as effective. But the ownership has sat up there and said, oh, we couldn't afford him. It's an outright lie. It is a lie. Do not buy it. No one out there truly believe maybe there was some Kool-Aid drinking and hopium involved that oh yeah simply do more with less was going to work that's what the Cowboys have done this off this offseason and you are now paying the price for your offseason in action don't fall for the pie lie the Cowboys could have done stuff if they wanted Derrick Henry they could have signed him they're paying Zeke Elliott like three million dollars this year on the cap Derrick Henry's making five you you could have you could have kept you could have done that on the cap this year. It wouldn't have been that 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 hard. I, I'm, I'm going to try less to get mad when Jerry Jones lies, but I will call him out for it. So what percent of the overall blame should go to the ownership? And that's I think that's J Jerry and Stephen Jones, mind you. What percent? Let me know in the comments of today's show. My hot take here because I'm cheating with the math. It should be 100 percent. Now, there's also a more than 100%. There's actually 200%. In the end, it is their team. They made the roster decisions. They've made the contract decisions. They've picked the head coaches. They've signed off on the assistants. They forced Mike McCarthy to basically bring in Mike Zimmer or heavily encouraged him to do so. They have been the only constant. The Jones family, 
over the, the last 28-something years. It's just them. At some point, the buck has to stop with, with, the, with the ownership group. And guess what they have never done one time? Take an accountability. They've never said, yeah, we're the ones who screwed up. Uh, that's our fault. They never say that. It's always somebody else's fault. I think that tends to trickle down to your entire organization and players included. Eh, the owners, the owners found it. Who cares? Bad. It's bad. That is the bad Cowboys culture. Let's talk running game here. Uh, it's bad. You can't run the football. Your scheme's bad. Your blocking's not very good. And you have nobody to generate plays outside of structure and make guys miss because you've got five force missed tackles and three of them are by Deuce Vaughn. Bad. Bad spot to be. The, the questions are going to remain, hey, when do you give Dalvin Cook a chance? And I am fine doing it because I can't just keep doing the same thing over and over again. I think it's going to be different. I have to try something. That does mean somebody has to sit, though. Because I don't. you can't have four running backs active, not including Huntley, who we'll have a conversation with, by the way. Look, here, here are the stats on the ground this year. Elliott's got 19 carries for 62 yards and a touchdown. Dowdle, 23 for 88. Deuce, 7 for 20. Rico's got two force missed tackles. Deuce Vaughn has three. Yards after contact, 2.05 for Zeke. 2.09 for Rico Dowdle. 2.57 for Deuce Vaughn. It's not good. Receiving stats. Zeke's averaging 2.6 yards per catch. Deuce Vaughn's at 7. Rico Dowdle's at 7.4. It's not good. Deuce Vaughn is like averaging like a force missed tackle every other touch, by the way. But the supporting cast hasn't been very good. And if you keep running the ball up the middle, that doesn't fit your, your current offensive personnel. So you have to bench one of these guys. If you're going to call up Dalvin Cook. I, I, you can't have four of those guys. After. It doesn't make roster management sense. Pick one to bench. DV for Deuce Vaughn, RD for Rico Daddle, EE for Ezekiel Elliott. Now, your options are not great. So I do want to emphasize that part here. I think right now it's, it's pretty clear that Rico Dowdle is, is your best back. He's been the same or better in like every metric of Zeke compared to Zeke this year. Against lighter boxes, by the way. Or sorry, against more stacked boxes. The opposite. Deuce Vaughn is the least used back. So that one does make sense. And by the way, if you're just going to run the ball up the middle, there's no point in having Deuce Vaughn out there. Like That just doesn't make any sense. He's small. Get him on the edges or run duo, which they don't do either of. They're just not using their personnel right in, in that case. Now, Deuce Vaughn also helps on special teams. That's a consideration you have to have because you're going to have three backs up that don't play special teams, even though you don't play Deuce Vaughn much on special teams. So maybe you can get away with it. Also of note, and this is where we're going to get into this longer part of the conversation, it took the Cowboys two games to drastically cut back Ezekiel Elliott's snaps and usages. And I mean drastically. Look at the snap counts from Zeke. Week one, he played 32 snaps. Week two, it dropped down to 28. He played 15 in week three. It's been cut in half already. The week three snap counts, Rico Dattle played over double, 37. We'll talk more about Hunter Lipke in a second. Zeke played 15. Deuce played five because I don't think this coaching staff knows how to use him properly, even though we kind of all know what needs to be done there. Hunter Lipke had a very interesting deployment against the um, Ravens. 17 snaps from him, even though he had zero carries. He was basically in there to pass, protect, and block. That's what you signed Zeke to do in part, right? Six tight end snaps, five fullback snaps, two slot receiver. He's kind of like Taysom Hill, except that he doesn't throw. He also has a core. So he's he's going to be involved. Your passing snaps, like going out on routes or chipping and stuff. Non-pure non pass protection snaps were this. 21 from Dowdle, 19 from Lipke, 9 for Elliott, and 3 for Deuce Vaughn. So passing downs, again, you are dialing back Ezekiel Elliott, and suddenly you are ramping up um, Hunter Lipke in the process there. The, the pass blocking snaps also seem somewhat important to, to consider here. Uh, Rico Dowdle had 4. Hunter Lipke had four. Ezekiel Elliott had three. They, they again, dialed back Elliott as, as a pass protector. The whole thing of, of the, whole, the whole plan of like short yardage stuff for Zeke and all he can pass protect and, and do other stuff. Can't Lipke do that? Can't Dowdle do that? They've 
By the way, all three backs, Dowdle, Lipke, and Elliott, had a very good pass protecting reps this week. Very good. So there's also this part, too. If you're going to use Dalvin Cook, your own head coach has already said he is a great outside zone player. So you have to use outside zone. Guess what the Cowboys don't do? Outside zone. Even diminutive Deuce Vaughn, they're out there putting it right up the middle. Oh, look at these splits of inside zone runs. 68.4% for Zeke, 65.2% for Dowdle, and 67.1% for Deuce Vaughn. So here's my overall mindset. If you're going to play Dalvin Cook, you want to run more outside zone. Well, if I'm going to run more outside zone, my other backs should also be able to do that well. Otherwise, in case Dalvin Cook is bad or he gets hurt, I don't have to drastically overhaul my game plan from the week. Well, Elliott's not an outside zone runner anymore. Rico Dowdle can. I know Deuce Vaughn can. I think it is very tough between the lack of special teams value, between what you have on the roster, I think it is very tough to play both Dalvin Cook and Ezekiel Elliott. They can do it. They can say, we don't care. We're going to do it. But I, I kind of thought when Dalvin Cook signed, that was Ezekiel Elliott veteran insurance. Would the Cowboys do it? I don't know if ownership would like that because they, they swore up and down that Zeke was still great. The overall ground game once again looks bad. Which It's not just the player's fault. It's not just Zeke's fault or, or Rico's fault. A lot of things going on there. So would you bench Ezekiel Elliott for Dalvin Cook? Why for yes and for no in the comment section of today's show. Why for N.